Hi students, welcome to the question discussion session from the chapter Gravitations. So we have already learnt about uh, the theory uh, sessions uh, topic and hope you remember the formula, concept, the things, whatever we have learned. Now we are going to see the question discussions area from this chapter based on the theory what we have learned. We, we, will, we, we will learn certain new things and we will apply the things, the theory, the concept in which we have learned will be here. So let's move. Gravitation classroom discussion session gravitation the chapter is gravitation and it is a cd classroom discussion session of gravitations so i have the question paper <coughs> hope you also have the <coughs> same thing with you as well okay so let me start question number one gravitational force between the two masses at a distance d apart is six newton if these masses are taken to moon and kept at the same separation, then the forces between them become A's dash. So, what is the idea behind this? Gravitational force we know F is equal to G M1 M2 divided by R square. And F is depends on M1, F is depends on M2, F is depends upon the distance between them. And G is called universal gravitational constant. It is the name is called universal gravitational constant, which means in the entire universe, wherever you go, it is constant 6.67 into 10 to the power minus 11. So that value is constant everywhere. So F is depends upon mass and the distance. Now in one place, its mass, its uh, force is 6 newton. Now the masses are taken into a moon from other places where the masses values are same because masses will not change from planets to planets or from one one area to another area because it is constant but what is also kept will be here same distance is also kept the same so m1 no change m2 no change r has no change g we already know g is also constant so f is also same f has no change f has no change so answer to the question is how much six newton itself so this is matches with your option d your option d is the correct answer for question number one okay so let's move to the next question second question two bodies having the masses m each are placed at a distance r gravitational force between them is f if 25 percentage 25 percentage means uh, one by four masses of one body is transferred to the second body and the separation become half then the gravitational force between them so in the first case the gravitational force is equal to f is equal to g m square by what is the distance between them it's r so it's r square second cases so in this cases one body is mass m another body is mass m but we'll come to the second cases 25 percentage of the masses are transferred from the first body means this mass become m minus m by 4 and this become m plus m by 4 this body loses 1 by 4th of the mass which means 25 percentage 1 by 4 means 0 0.25 if you convert it into percentage means 0 0.25 into 100 so this body loses this body gain so here mass become 3 m by 4 now here mass become 5 m by 4 now and the distance between them here it is initially r now the distance between them is how much it's become r by 2 so the new force i'm going to find out f dash will be equal to g into m1 m2 mass of uh, product of this one so 3 into 5 15 m square divided by 16 whole divided by distance between them r square here become r square by r by 2 the whole square which means r square by 4 so this will go to the numerator so it become then 4 and 16 got cancelled so we'll get 15 divided by 4 g m square by r square what is g m square by r square this is nothing but our f so our f dash will be equal to 15 divided by 4 into f so answer to this question f dash equal to 15 by 4 times of f 15 by 4 this is matches with our option a so option a is the right answer for the question number two fine so let's move to the next question the third one third question question number three two particles of masses m each are moving in a circle of radius r under their action of their mutual gravitational attraction time period of each particle is so 
two particles which are moving over a circle this is one particle this is one particle and radius is r so the diameter is 2r mass is m and this mass is m so this will have a gravitational force fg each other and this will also have a centripetal force so i know the gravitational force will be equal to centripetal force so the question will be aim will be here i need to find out the time period so how to find out the time period time period equal to distance divided by speed 2 pi r by v so to get this one i need v so what is fg g into m square divided by m1 m2 m square divided by r, r square so it become 2 r the whole square which is become 4 r square is equal to m v square by r so m m get r square and r get cancels m square and m will cancel balance is g m divided by 4 r is equal to v square so v is equal to we know so uh, we can substitute further over here so v is equal to 1 by 2 g 1 by 2 g m divided by r whole raised to 1 by 2 now we'll substitute the stuff so will be here 2 pi r divided by v v become this so 1 by 2 will go to numerator so it become 4 and root gm so it will be there as root gm into this r by 2 will go to numerator so r by 2 okay so 2 become so if you substituted this v over will be here this value will substitute over here so what will get 4 pi r raised to 3 by 2 whole divided by root of gm okay so this was answer to the question 4 pi r raised to 3 by 2 divided by root gm so this is matches with our option b option b is the right answer to the question we we'll move to the fourth question the fourth one mass of a planet is 1 by 9 that of mass of earth mass of the planet is equal to 1 by 9 times of mass of earth and radius is half that of earth radius of planet will be equal to 1 by 2 times of radius of earth if a body weight 9 newton on the earth surface its weight on the planet so on earth mg e equal to 9 newton what is the weight on the planet weight is mg so mgp is how much as you can see here acceleration due to gravity due to earth acceleration due to gravity due to planet mass will be changes so this factor is only changing over will be here so what is acceleration due to gravity over earth g m e by r e square now what is acceleration due to gravity of a planet g m p by r m p square now if you substitute it what is for m p m p is equal to 1 by 9 times of 1 by 9 times of a p what is r p r p is equal to r e by 2 so r e square by 2 2 square so it will go to numerator it become 4 by 9 so we will get 4 by 9 g m e divided by r e square we will get we will substitute for m p m p is m e by 9 r p is r e by 2 2 will substitute these two here so we'll get 4 by 9 what is the value of this one this one is nothing but acceleration due to gravity g e so i can write this m g p is equal to 4 by 9 times of g e 4 by 9 times of g e so which means 4 by 9 into m g e what is m g m g is 9 newton okay so 4 by 9 into 9 both are cancelled answer equal to 4 newton is the weight of the body on the planet so the concept behind this question is only the changes of acceleration due to gravity acceleration due to gravity at the earth acceleration due to gravity at the planet we find out and we got it is 4 by 9 times of as that of earth 4 by 9 times of the, that of earth means weight is also 4 by 9 times of 9 so answer will got it as 4 newton uh, so answer is option C option C is the right answer for the fourth one okay so acceleration due to gravity is the only factor which is changing and which will be deciding the weight of your body acceleration due to gravity is changing for mass and as well as for distance 
for height acceleration due to gravity different cases and for acceleration due to gravity changes for the depth acceleration due to gravity changes when due to the rotation of earth all these things we have learned right the same concept is applied over here but this is for a planet we calculated the acceleration due to gravity fine we'll move to the question number fifth one fifth question let's move to the fifth one okay weight of a man weight of a man in a lift moving upward is 608 while all the same mass in the man moving in the lift is downward with an acceleration is 368 and his normal weight will be okay so <coughs> weight of a the first point is weight of a person weight of a person in a lift in a lift means weight of a person in a lift means is equal to tension tension capital t is representing that now first case is lift is moving upward the tension is upward mg is downward acceleration is upward so we'll write the loss of motion equations over will be here so what we are getting from out of this one t minus mg is equal to ma second case this is moving upward we know it's moving upward second case tension is still will be there because the lift box is connected with a rope mg weight downward accelerations downward because it is moving in what direction it's moving in downward direction so t minus mg is equal to minus ma okay now from these two equations what you can write t minus mg is equal to ma our first equation second equation sir mg is taken to the right hand side so uh, i can write like this one the first equation mg is taken to the right hand side so mg plus ma second equation mg is taken to the right hand side so it become mg minus ma equation number two these values are given in the question first case these values will be our 608 608 this value is how much it is uh, how much it is given 368 now if i add these two equation equation number one plus equation number two i will get 608 plus 368 is equal to if i add uh, if you are adding these two so lhs will be added and rhs will be added so what what uh, what should i will get 608 plus 368 added so uh, 608 plus 368 is equal to mg mg ma may cancel so it become 2 mg what is the question his normal weight normal weight means mg mg I have to calculate so mg equal to 608 plus 88 16 balance on 607 6976 divided by 2 which is equal to 488 right 4 7, 6, 488 so 488 newton is the weight of the body so answer is option B. So always remember when it is talking about lift the same problem the same question may ask in loss of motion also but weight in lift in this indicate its tension you substitute this given values for tension this is a normal weight this is the acceleration of the body you solve these two equations so that will get the answer fine. Now we will move to the next uh, part of the <coughs> question discussion sir that is question number 6 we are discussing question number 6 height at which the weight of the body become 1 by 9th of its weight from the surface of the body I told weight will be changes due to the changes in the acceleration due to gravity only the height at which the weight of the body become 1 by 9 so which indicate in the surface its weight is mg okay suppose the surface weight at a at a certain height is become 1 by 9 which become mg by 9 this is the indications <coughs> okay so what is the value of height above the earth surfaces so its weight become mg by 9 1 by 9 now if you see m m constant but what is actually changing g changes to g by 9 g changes to g by 9 due to height so the changes of acceleration due to gravity due to the height we are going to calculate so how many formulas we have g dash will be equal to g into 1 minus 2 h by r and g dash will be equal to g into 1 plus h by r the whole square 
so which formula i have to use this is a main confusion which is uh, coming for the students normally suppose if h value is given okay and if h value is less than or equal to 5 percentage of r okay you can use equation number one this is equation number one equation number two okay which one i use but see if suppose if r value equal to 100 then h is less than or equal to 5 percentage of 100 100 to 5 percent is another 5 r okay so if if the h value is given as 5 r okay uh, or h value is given as 5 5 r value in the question r is equal to 100 and h is equal to 5 if this ratio is given you can directly go and use this one suppose if h value is not given 5 instead of h is given 10 so h is not less than or equal to 5 percentage h is equal to 10 with respect to r is equal to 100 is 10 percentage so this condition is failing if this condition is failing you have to go and use this one but in in this problem h value is not given h value is not given without giving an h value how i can take a decision whether i have to use this one or use this one very simple way i will tell you see if you see the factor 1 by 9 if you take the perfect root you will get a perfect root for this one right 1 by 9 the perfect root means 1 by 3 1 by 16 is coming for example 1 by 16 the perfect root means how much 1 by 4 1 by 25 if a perfect root numbers are coming then you take this one blindly take this one blind means this will satisfy the conditions that's what I have said. you have to take the one advantages of using this method will be equal to this is an approximated method this is a real method from this one we will expand some binomial expansion from there only we have deriving this one if you refer to my class notebook you can see that so h by r the whole square from this only this is an approximate equation is derived using some 1 plus uh, nx raised to minus n that formula we have applied and we derived this one 1 plus x raised to minus 2 we are expanding the binomial theorem and take an approximate equation <coughs> so where to use this one if you are getting a perfect number perfect a square root number like this you apply will be here because instead of g dash if you give g by 9 you can take both the side root and simplify easily okay so this is always the accurate method this is an approximate method so approximate methods can be used whenever if you are not getting a fractional numbers that is a very common trend to solve solve this kind of question so let's go so g dash become g by 9 so d dash become g by 9 g into 1 plus h by r the whole square now you see g and g cancel if you take a square root on both side you will perfectly get 1 by 3 if this is not 1 by 9 for example if uh, if it is given like 1 by 3 or 1 by 5 something like that given you use this method okay it's not a perfect square number you cannot take a perfect root whenever you can take a perfect root use this method that is an easy way to simplify this question so 1 plus h by r now i'm doing a cross multiplication 1 plus h by r will be equal to 3 h is equal to h is equal h by r is equal to 2 and h is equal to 2r so at a height h is equal to 2r the weight become 1 by 9th h is equal to 2r option d is the right answer for question number 6 okay so then let's move to the next question question number 7th one seventh question we will see the seventh question okay escape velocity of a body from the earth surface is ve escape velocity of the same body from an height is equal to r from the earth surface will be okay so seventh question escape velocity of a body from the earth the surface is ve this is r distance away now question is escape velocity of the same body from an height is equal to r so h is equal to r what is the escape velocity v e dash is how much this is the question this value i know at the surface root of 2 g m by r this is equal to root 2 g r we already seen this one okay 
you know from this equation how we are getting gm equal to gr square correct right? from this one how we are getting g is equal to gm by r square so gm equal to gr square if you substitute over here and simplify you will get this one okay so fine now i need to find out escape velocity from there okay so now what we are going to do means escape velocity means suppose if you are drawing from here this will go to infinity now it is given like that you are at an height h is equal to r and you are throwing it and you are going to where you are going to infinity if you are going to infinity which means that at from an height h is equal to r h is equal to r height you are going to infinity so now this is my starting point total energy at initial is equal to total energy at final point final point is infinity so apply the energy conservation in these cases all this kind of problems total energy at initial stages i am throwing it is moving with a velocity so minus g mm divided by potential energy plus kinetic energy h plus r the total height from the center is 2r plus half mv square half into m into the velocity what is the velocity will be there escape velocity dash square and it is going to infinity what is the total energy at infinity is zero okay now i'll simplify this part so 1 by 2 m v e dash square equal to g m m divided by 2 r 2 get cancelled 2 get cancelled m get cancelled m get cancels so v e dash is equal to root of g m by r root of g m by r i got okay but now v e i know v e is equal to what root of 2 g m by r so this can be written as this can be written as root of g m by r is equal to correct eh? you you have to compare this one or or in a simple way you have this equation and you have this equations we'll do equation number one divide by equation number two so v e dash divided by v e is equal to root of g m by root of g m by r will cancel so one by root two so v e dash equal to v e by root two this is the answer for this question v e by root two option b is the right answer to this one fine we'll move to the next question next one is the our uh, eighth question okay a body of mass m is situated at a distance equal to 2 r radius of earth from the earth's surface the minimum energy required to be given to the body so that it may escape out from the gravitational field so question number eight a body which is situated at a distance of 2r from the earth's surface here extra r so this is our initial point this is our initial point okay and the additional energy if you are giving some extra energy this will go to so initial point plus an extra energy extra energy if you are going the body will go to an infinite position okay so what we can do total energy at initial point plus this extra energy plus this extra energy is equal to total energy at infinity if you are giving some extra energy along with the initial energy then it will go to infinity that is the case so total energy at will be here so what is the total energy at this point will be the minimum energy required to be given so that the body may escape out the earth gravitational field okay so the body over here okay when the body over here it is not throwing you are giving some extra energy okay so when the body is rim it is stays over here the question is not asked us to find out the velocity over here the question is will be the when the body is situating there you are giving some extra energy it's going there so now it is at rest so g m m divided by total height become 3 r plus extra energy i am giving as x energy at infinity equal to zero please remember there is no kinetic energy because the body stays there first 
first then you give energy it will go to where infinity so during starting starting from rest i can say starting from rest so there is no kinetic energy term so x will be equal to g mm divided by 3r i told what is this gm term gm term equal to g r square into m divided by 3r so this become equal to mgr divided by 3 mgr divided by 3 answer is b answer is b this is question number 8 okay perfect okay orbital velocity of an satellite we are talking we are going to talk about the ninth question orbital velocity of an artificial satellite in a circular orbit very close to the earth will be equal to v so orbital velocity is equal to root of gm by r root of gm by r very close to earth means earth radius will take velocity of the geostation is satellite orbiting in a circular orbit at a height of 3r from the earth surface so v dash this is very close to 3r from earth surface so so from the earth surface it is at 3r so from the center always we are taking the distance from the center so it is extra r so gm divided by r plus h r plus h means h is how much 4r so v dash will be equal to 1 by 2 times of root of gm by r what is gm by r v so our answer is v by simple question option answer is c okay ninth question answer is c v by 2 fine <coughs> we'll go to the 10th one we'll go to the 10th question a geostationary satellite is orbiting the earth at a height of 5r from the surface of earth so first case at an height h is equal to 5r it is orbiting here and r will be the distance okay above the surface of earth r is being the radius of earth the time period of another satellite in hours at a height of 2r from the surface so another satellite and whose height is equal to 2r and this is a geostationary satellites so here this is a geostationary satellites geostationary satellites in the time period is how much 24 hours this you have to remember our globe earth 24 hours so uh, so this is orbiting around will be like this and this is orbiting like this and this is also orbiting like this so the radius the total radius is 6r here the total radius is 3r okay so we know t square is proportional to r cube as per kepler's law so t is proportional to r power 3 by 2 this is a general equation which we are applying over here t1 so t1 by t2 equal to r1 by r2 whole raised to 3 by 2 t1 24 hours t2 second planet the time period has to find out first one in the radius totally 6r second one in the radius totally 3r whole raised to 3 by 2 now now we have to simplify this factor and 24 24 divided by t2 is equal to 6r by 3r 2 okay so 2 raised to 3 by 2 so t2 equal to now t2 equal to 24 divided by 2 raised to 3 by 2 now if i take a root what should i get 24 into 3 by 2 2 cube na nane 8 8 into root appo 4 4 into 2 neither you can write 4 into 2 okay so 24 divided by root of 4 into 2 4 into 2 4 into 2 means what 24 divided by 4 into 2 is 2 so this you can write 2 root 2 so if you cancel this one what what you will get further i am writing here 12 by root 2 okay this can also written as 12 by root 2 there in the answer no it's not that answer okay now we are here now 12 by root uh, this steps can be written as 24 divided by 2 root 2 but uh, answer we got 12 root 2 which is not there in the options will 12 again we are written as 6 into root 2 into root 2 divided by uh, root 
so this root 2 root 2 cancel our answer is will become equal to 6 root 2 6 root 2 6 root 2 is coming as option a so 10th option a is the right answer to the question okay fine let's move forward okay so we'll move to the 11th question in case of orbiting the satellite if the radius of orbit is increased 11th one in case in case of orbiting satellites the radius is decreased so when radius is decreased what will happen to kinetic energy what will happen to the potential energy we have to see what is kinetic energy kinetic energy is equal to half mv square here become orbital velocity so 1 by 2 m into orbital velocity is gm by r that is the square so what we will get gmm divided by 2r okay this is for kinetic energy so what the question if the orbiting radius is decreased when r reduces what will happen to kinetic energy increases first point so we'll get kinetic energy increases second one what happened to the potential energy potential energy is equal to minus g mm divided by the height height is equal to r when r reduces when r reduces potential energy increases potential energy increases means what is increases negative value is increases negative value increases means you are going minus 10 minus 20 minus 30 minus 100 so minus value increasing means whether it is really increasing no it is decreasing right so i can say potential energy negative value increases potential value energy negative value increases so in reality in reality if a if a negative value increases means it's not an increase right it's a decrease in reality potential energy decreases because zero is greater than minus one minus one greater than minus hundred so minus hundred is higher value no it's, it's it's a lesser value actually if the total value has to reduce because it's a negative quantity when r decreases this is increases this increase means this is a negative value negative value increases means actually the potential energy is decreases For potential energy decreases kinetic energy increases option a kinetic energy decreases wrong answer potential energy increases no potential energy decreases both a and b are wrong so answer is 11th option d is the right answer both kinetic energy kinetic energy increases potential energy decreases so a and b both are the wrong answer for the 11th question okay let's move to the next one 12th fine what's about the 12th one is speaking about a rocket is fired from the earth surface with a speed of v is equal to 2 root rg in the upward direction so we know the given velocity is uh, 2 root rg 2 root rg i can say this is greater than escape velocity escape velocity is how much escape velocity is root 2 rg this is 2 root r so this is always greater so body will escape out rockets will remains in the earth gravitational field option a wrong answer rocket will revolve around the earth no wrong answer Ro rocket will escape from the earth surface so answer is option c so as it is given value is greater than escape velocity it will simply go out okay let's move to the 13th question Fine. 13th question is speaking about. We'll see. A satellite is launched in a circular orbit of radius r, and another satellite is launched in a circular orbit of radius 
the time period of the satellites in different from that of the first satellites will be uh, time period we know t is proportional to r raised to 3 by 2 okay so to find out percentage delta t by t into 100 this is what we called as percentage error which is equal to 3 by 2 into delta r by original r so this value has to find out time period change so 3 by 2 it is how much increased from earlier it is 1 r from there now it become what 1.01 r so which means 1.01 minus 1 divided by this into r divided by original r original r means 1 r so this is like 1 r okay 1 r if you multiply this one what you will get so 3 by 2 into this into 100 okay this into 100 percentage error right percentage error is 100 so this is like 0 0.01 r into 100 so which become so this become 1 r this actually become one i mean this r and this r will get cancelled so there is no r over here uh, divided by r so both will get cancelled 0 0.01 into 100 means 1 1 into 3 by 2 means 1.5 percentage 1.5 percentage 1.5 percent increased or decreased it is increased because both are directly proportional so 1.5 percentages are increased option a is the right answer move to the 14th question a force of 75 newton f is equal to 75 newton acts on a body of mass equal to 2.5 kilogram the gravi the intensity of gravitational field we told e is equal to f by m we already discussed this one right e is equal to f by m e is f is equal to 75 this is equal to 2.5 <coughs> so 3 answer become 30 so it is 30 newton force in the unit newton mass in the unit kilogram 30 per newton so newton per kg so option b is the right answer for the 14th question fine let's move ahead with our next question 14 hour 15 we'll move to 15th Okay. Okay. Height of the height of the point vertically above the Earth's surface, acceleration due to gravity become one percentage of its value on the surface. Acceleration due to gravity changes how much? One percentage. Only one percentage will be comparable to the value at the surface. So at the surface it is g at a height h it's become one percentage of g one percentage of g means one by hundred into g okay so i told we have two formula g dash equal to g into one minus two h by r and g dash will be equal to g divided by one plus h by r the whole square g is a perfect number yes one by hundred under root one by ten now so which one we have to use we have to use this one so we'll use g by 100 is equal to g into 1 plus h by r the whole square g g cancel if you take a root you will get 1 by 10 1 plus h by r so 1 plus h by r will be equal to 10 and h is equal to this become 9 9 into r it become 9 r so h is equal to 9 r option c option c is the right answer for the 15th question so we discussed about 15 question and we will move to the the next part the 16th and so on okay so let's go forward <coughs> Question number 16, 1-6. Depth D at which value of acceleration due to gravity become 1 by n times the value at the surface of earth. For depth only one equation, g dash equal to g into 1 minus d by r. d is the depth. Okay and 1 by n times the value at the surface so g dash will be equal to g by 1 by n times the surface of earth the surface of earth is g so g into 
1 minus d by r. G, g get cancels. 1 by n equal to 1 minus d by r. Okay. Here we have to find out d. 1 by n minus 1 equal to d by r minus d by r. Let's continue. So d by r will be equal to 1 minus 1 by n which is equal to n minus 1 by n. And then by solving this one we will get d is equal to. So d equal to n minus 1 divided by n into r. Let's see which, which of the match option is matching with this one. This is answer is option d. Option d is matches with this one. So 16th over. Let's move to the next question 17th. Angular velocity of the earth with which it has to rotate so that acceleration due to gravity on it become gravity 60 degree latitude become equal to 0. So acceleration due to gravity due to the rotation of earth g minus r omega square cos square theta. You have to remember capital R and small r. What is capital R? Capital R is the radius of the circle. Okay and the if you are taking any arbitrary point then this point is equal to r so this r and r will be is different small r will be equal to capital r cos theta so if you are writing this equation in terms of small r g minus uh, instead of r cos theta you can write it as small r omega square cos theta will come okay so the question is speaking about in terms of uh, acceleration due to gravity with respect to earth so this this r is replaced with r cos theta so that we will get this one so we will use this equation what it is telling the acceleration due to gravity is equal to zero so this is equal to zero so what we will get so then g is equal to r omega square cos square theta theta is the altitude angle that is means 60 degree which is given so what we need to find out omega so omega is equal to g by r and cos square theta if you are taking outside so g divided by r cos square theta so this is the value of this one now we will substitute the values in which uh, which we have already have and the theta value which is a la uh, altitude angle which is given as 60 degree and uh, the value of acceleration due to gravity uh, which we can substitute like 9 uh, sorry uh, it's 9.8 which is approximately 10 6400 kilometers into 10 power 3 that's the radius of earth cos square theta so cos 60 we know cos 60 is 1 by 2 so cos square 60 is what is become it become 1 by 4 so once we solve this one 2 10 power 4 16 16 5 2.5 so it is 2.5 so 2.5 into 10 by 10 power minus 3 radians per second so this is option b 2.5 into 10 power minus 3 radians per second okay this 4 and this 4 get cancelled 16 10 by 16 which become um, 5 by 8 which you can solve and this uh, two zeros will be there and 10 power 5 which you can make it as a factor of 4 and take 225 6.25 root 62.5 so 2.5 into 10 power minus 3 radians per second this is 17 i forgot to mention the number this is 17 great let's move to the next question question number 18 okay so these two are clear we are at 17 part and we are moving to the question number 18 18. Fine. A person is not, not not a person. A projectile is fired vertically upward. Question number 18. I am speaking uh, upward from the surface of Earth with a velocity k v e. So we are projecting with a speed of k v e. Uh, you can see v is escape velocity. K is less than one. K is less than one means it's like 0.1 ve, 0.2 ve like that. So which means we are throwing the ball less than escape velocity. So ball is not escaping out. Neglecting the air resistance maximum height to which it will rise measured from the center of the earth is. So center of earth is R and this height up to what height it will rise. 
so this is the final point right so total energy at final and this is the point and this is total energy at initial so total energy initial equal to total energy final for all this problem energy conservation initial from here speaking about velocity so half m v square v square means what k v e square plus potential energy there minus g m m divided by capital r this is on the surface now i am going to an height h so there this is a maximum height but it is within the gravitational field so what will happen if i throwing the ball it's less than escape velocity it will go 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 and speed will be decreases speed will be decreases on going upward when it reaches the maximum height what will happen earth will be pulling down okay so at maximum height velocity will be equal to zero here one of the main point you have to remember suppose if i am throwing the ball with a velocity of ve escape velocity then what is the velocity at maximum height it's not zero velocity at the maximum height in projectile motion in two di two dimensional motion and here also we are learning velocity at maximum height is equal to zero only if the throwing velocity is less than escape velocity if it is great if it, if if it is equal to escape velocity and greater than escape velocity then what will happen the ball which is going upward will not come back because it is escaping out of earth and it will go to infinity very important okay now in this case this is throwing a velocity less than as we know k is less than 1 so this is throwing a velocity less than escape velocity so definitely it is not escaping out of gravitational field it will attracted by the gravitational field so at maximum height velocity equal to 0 so kinetic energy at maximum height is equal to 0 potential energy is minus g mm divided by r plus h r plus h so the question is asking at what height right neglecting the maximum height to which it will rise to from the center of the earth from the center of the earth from the center of earth means r plus h we need to find out this is the distance from the center of earth so let me make the uh, distance from the center of earth a small r but i know small r will be equal to r plus h it's a distance from the center so i need to find out that so m cancels m cancels m cancels or over will be here so let's simplify this part so 1 by 2 k square v e square v is escape velocity escape velocity in the formula root of 2 gm by r in the square it the gm by r 2 gm by r and it's minus gm divided by r is equal to right side minus gm by small r we know r plus h because we have to find the distance from the center so what will cancel gm cancel gm cancel gm cancel so what is remains will be here 2 cancel 2 cancel so k square by r minus 1 by r equal to minus small 1 by r so we'll solve this one so k square minus 1 k square minus 1 whole divided by r taking as lcm equal to minus 1 by r so small letter r will be equal to i am cross multiplying minus r divided by k square minus 1 or i can say r divided by 1 minus k square both are correct r divided by 1 minus k square r divided by 1 minus k square option a is the right answer for the question option a is matches with this one 18th one okay hope this is clear we'll move to the next question 19 so most of the cases like energy conservation based questions will come or anything related to acceleration due to gravity at a height at a depth or due to the rotation due to the shape of the earth or based on kepler's law so any question may come we cannot predict which area the questions will ask any questions may come so you should be prepared uh, at each and every corner of the chapter so let's move to the 19th one so what's 19th question if the variation of speed of the planet in their orbits about the sun is explained on the basis of the variation of speed of planet in their orbits around the sun around the sun so we have a semi major axis semi minor axis sun will be there and the planet is rotating and this is the planet which is rotating so here which will which are the th things angular kinetic energy no linear momentum no 
here there is a conservation of angular momentum i told like uh, the aerial velocity da by dt is constant while i am taking the kepler's law i mentioned as well as i mentioned l divided by 2m this is called a angular momentum angular momentum is constant angular momentum angular momentum to the mass is actually constant but mass is everywhere it is constant so l is fixed if l is fixed only total will be get fixed so angular momentum angular momentum to the mass so this already we did this term is constant so the whole term is constant mass is already constant so if this is constant only all term will come to constant so this aerial velocity as well as the angular momentum to the mass ratio which is conserved let's move to the question number uh, questions 220 answer to the question for 20 a satellite is moving around the earth with a speed v in a circular orbit of radius r if the radius is decreased by two percentage then the velocity so orbital velocity is equal to root of gm divided by its radius if it is very close to earth it become r so i know v is proportional to 1 by root r or i can say v is proportional to r raised to minus 1 by 2 now it is our uh, uh, comparable to the previous question with respect to percentage error they are asking so what we'll do delta v divided by v into 100 is equal to this ratio minus 1 by 2 delta r divided by r here into 100 here minus indicate decreasing that is the only things okay so let's see uh, i will come to if the radius is decreased by two percentage so the total it's given us two percentage so minus 1 by 2 into 2 so what what you will get minus 1 percentage so what is this minus indicate means uh, this r is reducing in order to represent the reduction of r only this minus will be coming will be here right two per see uh, they are they are giving two percentage reducing two percentage coming down so it doesn't matter if you uh, if you put a plus or minus that doesn't matter for us will be here why because why because why i am telling this uh, you are representing minus will be here means so this minus indicate these are reverse proportion when this decreases this increases when this increases this decreases to represent that only this minus is coming so it's not necessary that you have to represent the minus because already you know one is decreasing another one is decreasing so you are getting one percentage now one percentage means you know r is decreases by two percentage but you get v v as one percentage so v will be what happened v will be increases by one percentage so both are reverse proportion right so of course it is plus okay so one is increase one is decreasing that's what if you're taking minus one by two into delta r by this minus indicate both are in reverse proportions so if you are not keeping the minus over here you can write this answer in two way one way you can say minus one percentage another uh, another way is like a this minus indicate r decreases r decreases this minus indicate r decreases and if you are saying like one percentage if you are saying like one percentage then r decreases yeah, r decreases two percent so r decreases two percentage so one percentage increase of what v so this minus and without the minus sign without the minus signs you can write like this also now so two things i'm saying if you are writing minus one percentage no confusion this minus indicate both are in reverse proportion you can say uh, uh, you can say r changes r changes by two percentage so this changes r changes what changes it decreases so if you have, if you are simply pegging one percentage yeah, you are writing so this one percentage is a value of v where r decreases you are explicitly decreases without taking a minus if you're taking minus you can say r changes so what changes so it's a decreases because it's minus that is indication so you don't want to confuse over much on this one so you know it is an inverse relation so in very short because so then if one is decrease another one is increases so instead of writing minus 1 by 2 r you can also write 1 by 2 into r and you are getting one percentage you know r will be what will happen r is r is in the given question is decreased so v will be increased we will be increased by one percentage so let me write this one 1 by 2 into 2 percentage so i will get one percentage so one percentage v increases v increases for two percentage for two percentage 
decrease in R. So answer is 1 percentage. Uh, increases by 1 percentage. Option A is the right answer. Okay. So let's move to the next question. <coughs> question number the 20 is over. Let's move to the next part of the uh, question discussion. Next part of the question discussion means next question 20 is over. Let's move to 21. Okay. So let's see what's coming for us from any surprises from 21. Two satellites of masses 1000 kilogram and 1500 kilogram are revolves around the earth in a circular orbit of radius 4R and 9R respectively. Where R is the radius of earth. Orbital speed of the two satellites will be in the ratio. We need to find out the orbital speed of the satellites. Okay, so we'll answer the question number 21. 21. Current satellites, current masses are given around and we need to find out the orbital speed. Orbital speed of 1 divided by orbital speed of 2 is equal to what is orbital speed? Gm into mass of earth divided by the radius r1 divided by root of g and mass of earth divided by its radius r2. So the orbital velocity is not depends upon the mass of the satellites. Orbital velocity is depends only on the mass of earth but radius throughout the radius. So if a satellite is rotating, if a, uh, if a satellite which is placed over here then this is called the r1. This is earth mass. This is a satellite mass. This is not depends upon satellite mass. Satellite mass is small m. So, orbital velocity of 1 divided by orbital velocity of 2 is equal to root of R2 divided by R1. Now, let's see. Hmm, okay, orbital velocity ratio they are asking. Root of, what is R2? What is the second radius? 2 satellite masses, 9R revolving around the earth in circular orbit of radius 4R and 9R respectively. So, second one is 9R, first one is 4R. RR cancels 9 by 4 under root 3 by 2. Answer is 3 by 2 which is matches with option D. Fine, perfect. So let's move to the next question. 22. <clears throat> An object is projected with a velocity uh, root of 8 gr by 3 from the earth. Velocity of the object at the maximum height. Here the trickiness will be there. See. 22. Here we have to do some activity. Listen very carefully. An object is projected with a velocity root 8 gr by 3. We know escape velocity is equal to root of 2 gr. But now we are throwing a velocity of root 8 gr by 3. 8, 8 gr by 3. Which one is greater? I don't V is greater than escape velocity. 8 by 3 means you will get 2 point something. You will get 2 point something. So, V is greater than 2 GR. So, at maximum. So, this is once you are throwing. The ball will not return back after reaching the maximum. Ball will go. Okay. Ball will go to infinity. So, so in this case. Is, um, the velocity of the object at the maximum height reached will be. So, we will apply the energy conservations. Okay. So now let's uh, listen very carefully. This is the earth surface initial point. Initial point. And uh, uh, what will happen if I am throwing the ball with a velocity which is greater than the uh, escape velocity. Ball will go up. Go up means ball will go to infinity. So I am sure the ball will go to infinity. But a very basic principle in physics like if a uh, uh, for example, let me make it a little bit of theory. Listen very carefully. If I have a ball which is located over here. Okay. Now, the ball will have, the ball will have, it's not moving for example. So, velocity equal to 0 and hence kinetic energy is equal to 0. Potential energy is equal to 0. Okay. Now, what I am giving means, I am giving some initial velocity over here. Now, giving an initial velocity. I am just throwing it away. So what will happen? If I am giving my velocity over here, if you are going upward, the velocity decreases. If velocity decreases, then what will happen? The kinetic energy of the body decreases. 
energy cannot be created energy can't be destroyed energy will be converted from one form to another so here kinetic energy degrees degrees means kinetic energy is losing but who is actually gaining the kinetic energy okay suppose i have a 100 joule of kinetic energy when i am starting from here now i am giving a kick okay so now i am giving with an initial velocity over will be here so say example i am taking my kinetic energy as 100 potential energy is mgh there is no height to the potential energy so potential energy is equal to zero now at this point i am looking at this point i can say kinetic energy is equal to 80 joule but potential energy is what you know energy is concerned total energy here equal to total energy here 20 joule if I am taking, maybe if it's going further up, if I am taking another point, I can say kinetic energy will be equal to 20 joule, potential energy will be equal to balance 80 joule. Now it reaches on the maximum height or kinetic energy, it is equal to, I am not saying it's a maximum height, uh, in case of a normal uh, projection cases, it's a maximum height. Else, I can say kinetic energy is equal to 0, potential energy is equal to 100. So what, what the trend you can see over here? The trend means there is a losing of kinetic energy and there is a gaining of potential. This is a universal phenomenon. Whether if you are throwing the ball with an escape velocity or if you are not throwing the ball with an escape velocity, at some point of time, all your kinetic energies are exhausted and your potential energies are gained. So, here the ball is going to infinite point means this point I am considering where kinetic energy exhausted kinetic energy exhausted and the kinetic energy exhausted so i can say the exhausted kinetic energy the loosed kind of kinetic energy is gained by is gained by the potential energy exhausted kinetic energy gained by the potential energy so now this i'm taking as my total energy at the final position so total energy at the initial position means minus g mm divided by r earth surface plus half into m into v square what velocity is drawing 8 gr by 3 so it is 8 gr by 3 is equal to my final point which is at a distance of height away so its height is increases at some point of time at some point of time kinetic energy is equal to zero and the potential energy attain the maximum value that potential energy point g m m divided by r plus h r is the height from the center and the balance distance is h so here the kinetic energy is zero all the kinetic energy gained by the potential energy so this phenomena will normally happen in all the projection cases so at a at a particular height but it is not stopping it's not stopping means so this is the area where gravitational forces exist so at some point a momentarily the, the velocity will be the momentarily the term is important momentarily velocity will be equal to zero you are throwing with a velocity a g bar bar but due to the further push it is going to infinity so gm by 1 by m into kinetic energy potential energy on the surface is equal to the total potential energy at a height h i don't know what is that height i am putting and that height will be equal to h now we'll solve this one we know g gm is equal to minus g r square into m divided by r and uh, plus m g r 8 by 6 and gm is g r square m divided by r plus h okay so i have to clear that area now we are simplifying this terms over here okay so let's continue okay so do not say at maximum height velocity is equal to zero that is a wrong answer because we are throwing above the escape velocity if it is below the escape velocity then answer is zero but we are not throwing within escape velocity limit we are throwing above the escape velocity limit so it will shoot up but the the ball is keep on going at some point the kinetic energy drops to zero potential energy is maximum okay so up to that is keep but it's it's keep on going so this height we are taking within the gravitational field range not outside the range within the gravitational field range only these things will happen after the gravitational field there is nobody there you are free to fly anywhere 
okay so this is within the gravitational field right we'll simplify this one this is minus mgr minus mgr rr cancels and this is uh, 8 by 6 which become plus 4 by 3 mgr right 2 h uh, 4 by 3 and this is uh, is equal to mgr square divided by r plus h so r everywhere got cancels huh? so uh, mgr cancel mgr cancel mgr cancel minus 1 plus 4 by 3 is equal to r divided by r plus h minus 3 plus 1 narama 1 1 by 3 equal to r divided by r plus h so r plus h is equal to 3r h is equal to 2r so at a height of 2r at a height of 2r according to the given velocity equation this velocity is drops to because this is the initial velocity and this velocity will be the given velocity drops to zero and kinetic energy becomes zero momentarily and potential energy is gained by the whole kinetic energy at a height of h is equal to 2r okay now keep in mind now the real things so hope you have written up to this one now i need some material things now what is this is happening okay so the question will become let me take another color Object is projected as a jet from the surface. The velocity of the object at the maximum. So at this point, I know at this point. So at h is equal to two r distances. The whole given kinetic energy. The whole given kinetic energy means half m v square. At that point, at that point, the velocity is kinetic energy is completely converted into what minus g m m divided by r plus h. H is equal to two r. So it becomes three r. So this is the point at which my kinetic energy is completely converted into potential energy. Okay, at this point, this is my initial kinetic energy. But now this this, com this complete kinetic energy I have given to my potential energy. So this energy is equal to the total potential energy. Okay, so we'll simplify m and m get cancelled. So v square divided by two minus gm. So the velocity of the body. Okay, so uh, this complete energy is converted into this point V square divided by 2 is equal to here GM is equal to what? So at this point of time, the complete kinetic energy now I have given to my potential energy. So the complete kinetic energy which is given to my potential energy. So potential energy means uh, as I told before, if I am starting from the ground and if I am going upward, here kinetic energy is equal to maybe 90, potential energy P1 equal to 10. Now kinetic energy 2 is equal to 40. So uh, P2 is equal to 60. Now what will happen? Kinetic energy decreases, K3 equal to 0. And the potential energy P3 will be equal to 100. Which means I can say always kinetic energy plus potential energy is constant. Kinetic energy plus potential energy constant. Kinetic energy plus potential energy constant. Kinetic energy plus potential energy is constant. Constant means you can you can you can equate it to any value. Sorry, this is not equal. This is this kinetic energy plus potential energy is constant. Constant to any point. Constant to any point means what is the final destination point? As it is infinity. So energy at infinity is equal to zero. Now v square by two. This is taken to the right hand side. Gm divided by three r. Gm divided by three r. Now I need to solve this part. Sir. This is what we are going to do. Hope you have written this one. I have to clear this area. Okay. So I have to clear this area. Now what we will get? So V square divided by 2 is equal to G R square divided by 3 R. R and R will get cancelled. Sir. So V is equal to root of 2 G R divided by 3. This is the answer for this question. So answer is option B okay so hope you understood so total energy is constant total energy is constant means uh, in this case the total energy is 100 joule because within the gravitational field but this is happening after you are pulling out of gravitational field so you are equating to zero total energy at the final point but now uh, it's uh, it's very important if uh, i have to give you a shortcut to find this one this is a bit longer method right to find a shortcut method how you can solve this question okay if given velocity 
if the given velocity v greater than escape velocity in this case correct in this case then the velocity at an infinite point at any point is equal to root of okay root of given velocity minus escape velocity square if you simplify you will get this one so we need to find out a velocity at a far away point because we are throwing a velocity greater than escape velocity so if you substituted over here we know we know the v square v square means our given value a g r by 3 escape velocity means 2 g r now we'll simplify this one so what i'll get this becomes 6 so 6 gr by 3 so it become you will get you will one step you will get 2 gr by 3 so this is a shortcut method to solve this problem this problem you have to remember in case if you forget that okay let's move to the next question question number 23 let me clean this board first Okay. Fine. So twenty two is over. Let's move to twenty three. What is 23? When a planet moves around the sun, which one is constant? Aerial velocity constant. Linear velocity V is not constant. Speed will be changed as I told, right? In perihelion, speed will be higher. Aphelion, speed will be lower. Or that, that condition, that uh, the, uh, the speed will be different at perihelion, aphelion. Angular velocity omega is not constant. But what is only constant? Aerial velocity is constant according to Kepler's law. So 23 option A is the right answer. So let's move to the next question which is question number 24. So 23 is a theoretical based question 24. Escape velocity from the planet from a planet is VE. A tunnel is dug along the diameter of the planet and a small body is dropped into it. The speed of the body at the center of the planets will be. Now I have a planet. You can see it's a solid sphere. And a, a tunnel is dug over here and a body is dropping from here so here velocity will be equal to zero this is at a height of r meter away so we need to find out what is the velocity at this point this was a question okay so here total energy initial point total energy final point total energy initial is equal to total energy final total energy initial kinetic energy zero but potential energy will be there minus g mm divided by r total energy at final final point here we have kinetic energy half mv square and here we have the potential energy so this is important what is the potential energy at this point minus 3 by 2 g mm divided by r you remember uh, i told it so three things we have mentioned right eh? so uh, this is a formula for a solid sphere for a solid sphere potential energy potential potential inside potential inside potential into small m equal to potential into small m equal to potential potential is equal to what minus gm divided by r cube into uh, minus gm by r cube into 3 by 2 times of r square minus 1 by 2 times of r square this formula i have written so this is a potential energy inside potential side i have taken this one while if you are looking into this one in case if you are not remembering or if i if if uh, if i forget this is a formula for a solid sphere potential but definitely i remember i have taken this one so gm divided by r cube into r square so, what, so r is the distance from the center so at the center point so v at center is uh, v at center means r equal to zero if you substitute this one minus 3 by 2 gm divided by r you will get this is a potential so this is potential energy so this is so this is potential so potential energy is equal to v center into m if you substitute it you will get this one v center into m we have to solve this one and we have to 
find the value so hope you remember these things which we have already taken this is potential so a body is dropping through the planet and is going inside so potential is now not outside inside inside is exactly where at the center if it is not at center some other points are we will be given you have to take the distance r from the center point to that point this much if if the velocity is asking this point means this point sometimes they will give you sometimes they will ask you what is same same problem but a, a, a thing is dugging a, a dug will be there and is dropped so what is the velocity when at its reaches at a distance of r by 2 from the center r by 2 from the center means r by 2 from the top also so in this case the same formula you have to apply you have to find potential where small r equal to capital r by 2 you have to substitute and you have to solve once you solve you got potential you have to multiply it with m that you have to substitute here that was a case so now as it is center we have r is equal to 0 it may not be center in some other cases also okay so i want to solve this one so hope uh, you can pause the video and you can complete the notes over this area so this is a i just revised it this is what we have learned before okay now let me look into the answer the speed of the body so we need to find out the um, uh, what we need to find out the escape velocity from a planet is ve tunnel is dug around the planet so the speed of the body at the center of the planet so we need to find out v square so fine so let me uh, substitute it over will be here gm in padala gr square gr square m divided by r minus is equal to 1 by 2 m v square v square is a final point velocity at the center so this velocity is v velocity at the final so minus 3 by 2 g r square m divided by r so here we got m g r okay so minus m g r is equal to 1 by 2 m v square minus 3 by 2 m g r m cancel m cancel m cancels minus g r so here we have minus g r this 3 by 2 is taken to this side so 3 by 2 g r is equal to v square by 2 so how much will you have? 3 by 2 means 1.5 minus 1 means g r divided by 2 is equal to v square by 2 2 2 cancels v is equal to root g r v is equal to root g r but what is expression for our actual escape velocity escape velocity is root 2 g r root 2 g r okay so escape velocity is root 2 just so this is equation number one this is equation number two so one by two one by two i am doing so if i am doing one by two v by v escape velocity v by v e is equal to root gr root gr cancels one by root two so v is equal to v e by root two v is equal to v is equal to v e by root two so answer is option a so 24 answer option a option a is the answer for 24th question okay let's move to the next part Twenty-five orbital angular momentum of a satellite is revolving around at a distance r from the center is l. If the distance is increased to four r, then the new angular momentum will be. So the orbital angular momentum of a satellite is revolving. So if a satellite which is revolving from the center at a r, its angular momentum is l. When the radius is increased to now to become four r, what is the new angular momentum l dash? So, angular momentum in a general formula is MVR, linear momentum, M is linear momentum, MV into R is called angular momentum. But V is an orbital velocity will be here. So, M into root of GM by R into R. If you simplify this one, what you will get? Here this R can be written as M into root of GM divided by r into root r into root r again so this root r root r cancel so i know l is proportional to root r l is proportional to root r so the new angular momentum l, l dash is proportional to root of what is the new radius it become 4r this is important 
okay so it become 4 r so l dash is equal to which uh, which become what 2 root r so now we have two formulas will be the equation number one and equation number two so we'll divide equation number one divide by equation number two which become l by l dash is equal to root r divided by two root r root r root r get cancels l dash is equal to two times of l l dash is equal to two times of l so this is our 25th question answer is b 25th question answer is b fine okay so hope you understood the, the 25 questions we are uh, approaching the end of this 25 questions are clear to you as well